All right, good morning, and welcome to worship this morning. I'm going to uh, guess that a lot of people didn't feel like cleaning their cars off this morning, or perhaps couldn't uh, shovel out their driveways. So for those that have made it out this morning, welcome. And for those that are joining us via the live stream, we welcome you as well. Uh, the biggest announcement for the week ahead is that next Sunday is the meeting of the congregation. Our annual meeting report packet is ready and available. We just ask that you take one per family. Um, so if I don't have enough pulled out for you all today, there's more in Janet's office. <laughs> so um, if you'd like to have time to read it before the meeting, um, it is available. And for those of you at home, if you'd like to swing by the office when Janet is in this week, you're welcome to grab one then. And of course, we will have them next week for the meeting. So we do have to officially um, state <laughs> that the session of the First Presbyterian Church of Sakasana does call the annual meeting of the congregation for Sunday, February 6th, following worship. For those of you that have not um, been gathering in person but do you want to attend the meeting, uh, we'll start at 11. So, um, so if you don't make it to worship, please be here by 11 for the meeting. Uh, for those that still are not gathering in person, I will send out a Zoom link and we will do our best to have a hybrid meeting. Um, we've been doing that with Presbytery, so I've seen it modeled at least, although um, it might be challenging for me to try it, but we'll do it. <laughs> so um, the meeting is called for the purpose of receiving the annual report, receiving the 2022 budget, electing the 2022 nominating committee, so please prayerfully consider serving on that for this next year. For receiving the report um, of the nominating committee, which will be electing new elders and deacons, um, we do have some vacancies. So I ask people to prayerfully consider perhaps um, their willingness to serve this next year as either an elder or deacon. We can make one year terms um, available uh, for this year, if you are willing to do that. Uh, we will be amending our bylaws, which doesn't happen very often, but uh, we are a new presbytery. We are now the presbytery of the Highlands, so we do have to amend our bylaws, plus there are um, a few additional amendments because of this COVID world we have experienced that will allow us to um, vote and hold meetings uh, by Zoom, which we've been doing anyway, but we'll make it official by amending our bylaws. Uh, you will approve, hopefully, my new terms of call for the year ahead, and um, we will have a meeting of our corporation, which uh, we will need to elect an audit committee. So again, please prayerfully consider if you are willing to serve on that committee for this next year, um, and then any other business. So that is the call to the meeting next week, and um, the session has agreed that we'll have a light lunch after the meeting, so we will order um, a sandwich platter, um, because some people may not want to eat, and we don't want to hold, we usually eat first and then have the meeting, uh, so we don't want to hold up um, we don't want people not to come to the meeting because of food. So we'll have the meeting first. Those that don't want to stay for food are welcome to leave. Those that would like to have some time of fellowship are invited to stay. So we're doing our best to kind of make it as comfortable for whoever desires to come. Um, but please let me know if you have any concerns. And again, the packets are here. So we hope people will, will get those. Um, as soon as Savannah comes in, I'll have her deliver you your little ball of play-doh <laughs> so um, for that part will come um, as part of our worship service today um, if you are at home and you might have something soft and squishy that you want to grab feel free to do so uh, let's see other announcements we do have a session meeting this week 
Uh, time just keeps coming by. It's already February. Next Sunday will be communion. Um, the deacons will be supplying the, the bread and the cup. Um, we'll use toothpicks for the bread. If you're not comfortable with that and you want to bring your own bread, um, I invite you to do so. Uh, but we will supply the bread and the cup, um, just so you are aware of where we are with the, the communion process. Are there other announcements this morning? Okay. Um, at this time, I will invite Amelia to come up and do our minute for mission. And then um, we will center ourselves on our music after her announcement. Good morning. Something very important is coming up in a couple of weeks. Does anyone know what it is? Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Yes, it is the Super Bowl of Caring Sunday. For 18 years, the First Presbyterian Church of Sukkasana has participated in the Super Bowl of Caring. This year is, a different, is different, and the Super Bowl of Caring understands that many groups are having a difficult time figuring out how to tackle hunger. And the need is greater than ever with over 14 billion meals needed to feed our food insecure neighbors in Roxbury and in communities around the country. Here's how you can help fill the shelves at Roxbury Social Services and feed the hungry at Faith Kitchen. For the second year in a row, we will be hosting a drive through food drive on Saturday, February 12th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. here at our church. Bring your non-perishable donations and our Super Bowl team will unload them from your trunk of your car. We'll see they are delivered to Roxbury Social Services. Let us know which team you're rooting for in the Super Bowl and we'll post our Super Bowl winner on our church's social media on Super Bowl Sunday. You can also bring in your donations next week while we're here at church. If you are unable to make it to the drive through food drive on the 12th or to worship on the 13th. You can make a monetary donation directly to Dover Faith Kitchen through their website. You can mail in a check to our church and make sure it's made out to FPC Sakasana and indicate in the memo line whether it's going to Faith Kitchen or Roxbury Social Services, and we will see that those donations get to them. Roxbury Social Services is currently in most need of the following items, instant coffee, decaf, and regular, individual snacks, canned fruit, fruit, fruit cups, ketchup, mayo, mustard, dish detergent, laundry detergent, and all paper products. The Super Bowl of Caring began with a simple prayer from a single youth group. Lord, as we enjoy the Super Bowl football game, help us to be mindful of those without even a bowl of soup to eat.
As we join together this morning, we continue with our sermon or our worship series on holy vessels. And our call to worship comes again from Marsha McPhee's Worship Design Studios. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Glass can only be created when the sand is met with the heat of fire. No wonder the scriptures and poets throughout the ages have spoken of a refining fire. The heat of fire is always destructive, but with intention and care and tending, what transpires from the destruction of fire can be a new form with purposes that are good, useful, and beautiful. Today, our holy vessels are intertwined with the fire of candles. Although the wax of the candle is being melted away, its energy is transformed into a glowing light, a light that symbolizes God's love that shines out to us. Holy, refining fire of the Spirit, offer us your light and life. Transform us, O oh God. Help us recover the beauty of who we are and see the goodness in being transformed. Our opening hymn this morning is 327, O Word of God Incarnate. <laughs> the worship service a little out of sync by having a scripture passage earlier on than we usually do. This passage comes from Jeremiah chapter 18 beginning with verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, come go down to the potter's house and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. 
the vessel he was making a clay was spoiled in the potter's hands and he reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him then the word of the lord came to me can i not do with you o house of israel just as this potter has done says the lord just like the clay in the potter's hand so are you in my hand o house of israel pick up a lump of clay and mold it in your hands That part. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I'm thrown off myself here, but um, I think the scripture ends there. Um, so pick up a lump of clay and mold it in your hands. <laughs> so everybody should have their little piece of Play Doh. So we pick up a lump of clay and think about how we can mold it in our hands. And think about the creation of the world. The touch of God's hands on the very substance of the universe. So as you change the appearance of the clay with the touch of your hands, think how the world you live in has touched and changed you. So just like the, the, the potter in the scriptures of um, Jeremiah, right? We have our little piece of Play-Doh, and the world around us, has it touched and shaped you? Think of how your hands have touched other people, perhaps in love or anger, in sorrow and in joy. And think of the things and people who have touched your life and molded you into the person you are today. So I give you this little tactile. If you didn't grab one, we have more down here. You can bring it home with you this week and, and think about, um, hopefully by the end of the sermon, a little bit more about the way God has shaped and molded you, the way the world in which we live has shaped and molded you, the way your life has been shaped and molded by others, and how you, perhaps, through your being, have shaped and molded the lives of those around you. Our responsive hymn is Spirit of the Living God. And prayer today comes from Martin Luther, uh, way back at that early stage of the Reformation. So let us join together. Look, Lord, on an empty vessel that needs to be filled. In faith I am weak, strengthen me. In love I am cold, warm me and make me fervent so that my love may go out to my neighbor. I doubt and am unable to trust you completely. Lord, strengthen my faith and trust in you. You are all the treasure I possess. I am poor, you are rich, and you come to have mercy on the poor. 
I am a sinner. You are goodness. From you I can receive goodness. But I can give you nothing. Therefore, I shall stay with you. Friends, hear these words that Paul writes in his letter to the Romans. He says, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to the stranger. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Friends, this is the good news. Let us now take this time to virtually share, or I'm sorry, some of us aren't virtual, but I'm so used to saying that, our socially distanced, um, sharing the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace. So we're going to do um, a newer hymn to us. I'm not sure if we sung this one before. Do you know? We know the tune. Okay. So this one is in the, the purple hymnal. I have not yet put it in our white binder, but it com- it's called We Come to You for Healing. Our second reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8, beginning with verse 5. When he entered Capernaum, that is Jesus, a centurion came to him, appealing to him, and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible distress. And he, that is Jesus, said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word, and my servant will be healed. 
For I also am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. While the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
So the Presbyterian Church USA has a logo, which is this cross. Perhaps you've seen it before. It should be, I think, on our hymnals, our Bibles, and I have it as a stained glass outside of my office. But along those sides of the cross, we have these flames of fire. Flames of fire. Yeah, flames of fire that are often associated with Pentecost and the Holy Spirit. When we view the PC USA logo, we should be reminded that we are indeed a people of God, the triune God, the God of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I don't know if you've ever taken time, but there's all kinds of symbols in that logo. But we are part of a God that is working in our lives, offering us forgiveness, and calling us into discipleship. A God that works in unique and mysterious ways. A God that seeks to transform us, refine us, mold us, melt us. I love the image from the passage in Jeremiah that was read earlier of God as the potter and us as the clay. Now, I've had my hand at using a potting wheel. I don't know if anyone else has gotten to throw clay and use the potter's wheel. And when I first did it, I started off really pretty well. The person said, wow, have you really not ever done this before? Well, as I was creating my bowl and everything just seemed to be going so well, it collapsed. <laughs> so if you've ever worked on a potter's wheel, perhaps you know that feeling. I don't know if I got too confident or what, but it just collapsed. But what you do is you just take a wire and you scrape it off the wheel and you put it back into a ball and you throw it back on. The clay doesn't change, right? It's still the same clay. But once again, I got to start over and try again. My next attempt at my vessel would look a little different, even though the clay itself was the same. We are God's creation. We are constantly learning and growing and being shaped. Sometimes in life, we might even just collapse, fall apart, have a breakdown, hit rock bottom. And we, just like my first attempt at my bull, might need to be picked up and formed again. It's amazing. It's amazing that our God loves us so much that God is willing to always be there for us, always picking us up again and again and forming us and shaping us and refining us. Now, last week, we had the image of sea glass to remind us of the beauty of broken things. Sometimes being broken is not the worst thing that can happen if we trust that God can create something beautiful out of our brokenness. But before the glass becomes glass, it has already gone through a transformation process. As we said in our opening liturgy, glass is actually made from sand. But in order for it to change from sand into glass, it has to be heated. It has to be heated at incredibly high temperatures until the sand itself melts and turns into a liquid. One of the things I found online said, you won't find that happening on your local beach. Since the sand melts at the incredibly high temperature of 3,090 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty hot, right? <laughs> I'm surprised glass exists. Like, the more I started learning, it's like, wow. But perhaps. 
perhaps you could find glass at your beach. There's a cute movie called Sweet Home Alabama. And although the movie is about a whole bunch of other things, there's a scene that involves what happens when lightning strikes the beach and creates a beautiful glass structure from the lightning hits melting the sand. So I'm not sure how well you can see this image, but it's, it's of the lightning striking the sand and causing this incredible glass structure. The amazing thing about melting sand is that when the molten sand cools, it doesn't turn back into anything that looks like sand, right? It's clear. Sand isn't clear. It undergoes a complete transformation and gains an entirely different inner structure. It's a great metaphor for what a life in Christ is all about. Through God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are like the sand. And we are refined by God's fire, also known as the Holy Spirit, transforming us into something completely different. Yes, our insides are still human insides, right? But we are um, cleansed, right, through God, through Christ. We have scriptures that tell us, in Christ we are a new creation. The old is gone. All has been made new. Or we use that image of the butterfly often at Easter as that sign of resurrection. But the butterfly's old self is a caterpillar. And incredibly, it gets transformed into something that now flies. We have incredible examples, beautiful examples from how nature transforms in so many different incredible ways. And God cleanses and purifies us as well into these holy vessels called to be a part of God's sacred work. So returning back to our clay liturgy. Two of the things that were part of that, it says, think of how your hands have touched other people. And think of the things and people who have touched your life and helped molded you into the person you are today. That is what this healing story is about that we read today with this centurion coming to Jesus for the healing of his servant. Now, the centurion and his servant are both people outside of the Jewish faith. But there's something about the centurion and his relationship with this servant that is special. The centurion cares deeply about his servant and is willing to do whatever it takes to have him healed. So he goes to this person, Jesus, this person that is, is not a Roman, is, is not a soldier, is not a doctor. But perhaps he's heard the stories and the rumors and the talk in the town about how Jesus is healing people. And he goes and asks Jesus not to heal himself, but to heal someone else. Now last week in the story that we had, the person had leprosy, and he came to Jesus on, this, on his own behalf, asking for himself to be healed. So we transitioned from someone asking for their own healing, now to someone asking for the healing of another. And we do this every Sunday in our time of prayer. Right? When we ask about our joys and our concerns, we name those others in our lives, and sometimes even for ourselves, the prayers that we desire for healing and wholeness. And we do this every week through our prayer chain. If you're not on that prayer chain and you want to be added, it's done through email, so it's easy to add you. Just let me know. But we reach out in prayer 
on behalf of our friends, of our loved ones. And we even pray for strangers, right? When we pray for those recovering from the tornadoes in the Midwest or now for those from this blizzard, right? We're praying for complete and total strangers. So now think not perhaps of how your hands can mold or shape or impact the lives of someone else, but think about that as perhaps your prayers. How does our faith, our praying for other people, how has that touched the lives of those around us? And then think about how other people's faith and prayers have touched your own life. Just like this clay can be molded, each of our lives, each of our lives have been molded by another person's faith, and perhaps even their prayers for us. And in turn, right, it's not always just a one way, in turn, your life, your faith, your prayers ripple out into the world around us and impact others. From Worship Design Studios, Marcia says, this army commander, a non-Jew, is not a part of the community of Jesus' followers. And the servant for whom he is advocating is a Gentile and a slave. He is the ultimate nobody. None of this matters to Jesus. Jesus came to bring salvation to everyone. And Jesus longs for this community to grow, no matter who society says you are. And so as the centurion comes before Jesus, although he is from this Roman Empire and he has power over the Hebrew people, he humbles himself before Jesus. Rome might be in charge over the land, but this man seeks something that the Roman Empire cannot provide. His servant, his servant is in great distress. And the centurion has compassion for him. And so he seeks help. He seeks out Jesus, the one that perhaps he's heard can heal people. And Jesus responds that, yes, indeed, he will heal the servants. The centurion confesses, Lord, I am not worthy. I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. What an interesting response from someone that has so much power and is a part of this empire. I am not worthy. But even if the centurion doesn't think he is worthy, he thinks his servant is, else he wouldn't have gone to Jesus to ask for the healing. It's an interesting humbleness, an interesting trait, an interesting understanding of of what he's going on on his inner self. That his servant perhaps is more worthy than he feels he himself is deserving of. Jesus responds to this man by by proclaiming he is a person of great faith. Jesus hasn't seen any other faith like this in all of Israel, he says. Is that because he believes Jesus can heal his servant? But not just heal him, but Jesus can heal him from afar, right? Don't even go near my house, just do it from here, I know you can. (laughs) In some of our healing stories, right, Jesus touches the person. Jesus says something directly to the person, right? Jesus will say, stand up and walk, but not in this story. It all happens from afar. And it's interesting because the servant then is healed without encountering Jesus in person. We often think of how we have to come to God, how we have to come to Jesus in order for that healing to happen. But this servant doesn't have that same encounter. 
His encounter is only through the intercession of another, through the intercession of that centurion. Does God's grace work that way? We so often focus on our own faith, our own connection to God, our own discipleship, but can someone else's faith draw God to us? Can someone else's faith bring us healing? I think that's what this passage challenges us to think about. To ask us to consider, to ponder, and to reflect upon. Perhaps in our own lives, we don't have such a dramatic healing story as this paralyzed servant needing healing. But in our own lives, we can be paralyzed in so many other ways. And there are so many human emotions that that can paralyze us. There's fear and anger and grief and anxiety. There's addiction, loss of purpose, stress. We can be paralyzed in so many different ways. And do we trust that perhaps someone else's faith might be exactly what we need during these times? That someone else reaching out to God on our behalf, reaching out to that potter to help restore the clay. Perhaps when we see that light shining through holy vessels of our extended family of faith, we just might understand a little bit better that we, too, are holy vessels. Remember that centurion didn't think he was worthy, but the paralyzed friend was worthy. Even in our paralyzed states, we are worthy, holy vessels, beloved by God, and worthy of having God's presence in our lives. Amen. And so at this time, we will come with our intercessions and lift up to one another if we have any joys or or concerns this day. Are there prayers that we wish to share? Adrian. Praise for Charles. Charles. We'll continue to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the just those those that got encountered by this big storm um, that might be without power on these frigid, cold days, um, and we pray for those just within our own community that. Um, you know, might be struggling as we think about the Super Bowl of caring for for food, um, for the money to help pay heating bills when the temperatures get so cold, Um, perhaps for church members that aren't able to gather with us here today. We hold them all in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, on this cold, snowy morning, we give you thanks for the ability to gather as your people, whether we are here in person or gathering with our modern technology, perhaps even connecting later in the day or later in the week. We give you thanks for the creativity of uh, Marcia McPhee and her visual inspiration of what it means to be holy vessels that each and every one of us contains something special from you and you call us to share that with the world. Remind us that sometimes that refining process of the fire is not always easy. But that when we look at it with faith and trust, perhaps we can see some beauty on the other side. Let me, God, we just continue to pray for one another, for those that are continuing cancer treatments or 
uh, treatments for other infirmities, for those that are uh, waiting to have surgery or are recovering and going through physical therapy. We continue to hold our nurses and doctors and first responders in our prayers as they uh, continue to do what they can to keep us safe despite their own exhaustion and perhaps even feeling like the pot on the wheel that collapses. It is hard. And so we pray for them. Loving God, we just give thanks for all the positive places in this wor world, for Roxbury Social Services and Habitat and Family Promise that work together with churches and other uh, groups of people and even corporations that desire to make a positive difference in the world in which we live and the lives of people. So bless this time as we um, center ourselves in your presence and, and ponder what it means to be your people. And now let us unite our voices together as we pray what Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn again is from the newer purple hymnal uh, for the healing of the nations. Now, as I send you out into the world in whatever way you are able to encounter it, know that in Christ you are a new creation. The old is gone and all has been made new. And even on those days where we just feel like collapsing, know that we are truly in God's hands and that God holds us and sustains us and keeps us together. 
So now may the grace and peace of God the Father Almighty, the reconciliation of the Son, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one, now and forever. Amen.